Uh, you may put your headphones on for a clearer sound. Um, but we're going out over the speakers as well. So our final session of the day is an Ask the Expert session. And I would like to introduce Adam Price, who is the growth architect. So Adam has successfully introduced HubSpot-based solutions to numerous global organizations, including event organizers. His expertise lies in constructing and seamlessly integrating registration systems, event applications, interactive features, customer portals, and data dashboards. These endeavors are all aimed at empowering his clients to fully harness the potential of their CRM systems and optimize the efficiency of their data utilization. With Adam's guidance, you will discover how something as straightforward as HubSpot can serve as a centralized repository for all your business requirements, establishing a unified source of information and a hub for integration and automation. I will hand over to Adam just before I do. Over there on the screen is a QR code uh, for Pigeonhole. Please post any questions that you might want to ask on there, and then we'll do a Q&A at the end before we break. So, Adam, over to you. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody, um, and thanks for coming. I know it's the end of the day, and you probably had a long event, so I appreciate you making the effort to come and see me, or you're either waiting for your train. But either way, thanks for being here. Um, that sounded a bit more interesting when I wrote it, so sorry it went on a little bit, but I've got experience of working with HubSpot for obvious reasons, but I've also got a lot of events experience, so I've worked in the events industry for circa 10 years. I dropped outside for a little bit, but I think like a lot of us have seen, it draws you back in for whatever reason, so I've got a lot of experience working for Gravitate and Dan's here today. Uh, I spent 10 years as head of sales for Gravitate, so that's where my event experience comes from, but an awful lot of sales... Uh, and marketing experience throughout my lifetime as well, which is what drew me to HubSpot. And I've worked with HubSpot on and off for around about 10 years. And something that I have seen is organizations seem to have a lot of similar challenges with CRM systems and event organizers, especially because we've got all of these fantastic solutions that we can use. It's actually bringing that data from these systems that causes people a lot of challenges. And I'm gonna try and talk about those a little bit today. Uh, and hopefully you've, you've got those challenges or seen those challenges. So what challenges do we have with current CRMs? You may be using HubSpot, you may be using another CRM. They all do pose the same challenges and those challenges are that you have um, data silos. So you can have data in lots of different pockets. People have got them in Excel spreadsheets. People have got them in some of these fantastic systems that we see here today that do give you, you know, really good analytics and good graphs. But the point is they're siloed. You haven't got a centralized source of data. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today and how important that is commercially to you as well. Lack of integration. I've been around today and I've been poking and prodding at people's APIs. An API is a little connection that you can make between one system to another. And they're really, really important in moving data around within your business. When you're looking at a solution, you should be thinking in the back of your mind, how can I integrate this? How can I bring this data into my CRM system? If they can't answer those questions for you, you need to make sure that it acts as a standalone solution, which is fine. It's fine to have a standalone solution, but if you want to use that data, you need to be thinking about that. Lack of analytics as well. We collect all sorts of data. I certainly have. I've been around, I've collected business cards. I've got brochures, I've been talking to people, I've got email addresses. We're collecting this data all the time. It's really important that you can look at it in a meaningful way so that you can look at your analytics, you can look at your data, and you can make decisions from um, a, a top-down view of what you need to do next. And overwriting data, I've put this one in here because I didn't necessarily feel it was a big challenge. But something I've seen with using CRMs within the event industry is that in fact it is. So if you've got a contact, for example, on your CRM and you ask them a question, uh, what are you interested in this year seeing at this event? And they say artificial intelligence, which a lot of people are, of course. And then you ask them the same question next year and they say that it's something completely different. Quite often it will overwrite that data that you asked them last time because you've got that one field in your CRM. And that's a big challenge that I've seen a lot of my clients having as well. So these are just some of the challenges. There's obviously way more than that. But I just want to talk to you a little bit about, oh, my clicker's not clicking, two secs. Where does HubSpot fit into all of this? Um, two main things stand out for me, and I'm going to talk to you about those in a second, but the ability to turn customer interactions into digital footprints 
And that's getting more and more important. What does the customer journey look like? What does the journey look like for anybody that's involved in your business from a digital perspective? Because we can get quite emotional about how you react with somebody in the conversations that you have, but how do you turn that into something that's meaningful for your business from your perspective? And then the ability to store data across multiple objects as well. I'll use the term objects because that's what they're called in CRMs. When you look inside a CRM, you've got a contact or you've got a company or you've got a deal record. They're actually called objects. So when I call it, talk about an object, I haven't just forgotten the name of it. That's what I'll be referring to them as. So digital footprints. Harvesting these digital footprints is really important. If you can capture something that your customer has done and turn that into a digital footprint, within your customer journey and you can store and you can log that data, then you can do something with it. If you don't collect that data, then it's just something that you haven't got anything to fall back on. So that digital interaction might be somebody opening an email. It might be a conversation that you've had at an exhibition stand with somebody. It might be somebody jumping on your website. It might be a networking event where two people have connected and they were somebody asked for a meeting, but the other person didn't accept the meeting. That's a digital interaction and you want to try and log all of these interactions because that allows you to do something with the data later on. And a challenge that you have with the digital footprint is where do we put it? Because what you can end up with is thousands of pieces of information, thousands of pieces of data that are in a long, long list or an Excel spreadsheet or a CRM system somewhere. And it's trying to figure out what can I actually do with this data? How can I turn this into something that's more meaningful? How can I create a customer journey that shows me the chronology of all of these digital footprints all the way along the way so that I can actually start to analyze them and do something about it? And then I spoke about custom objects and how do custom objects work. So we've got the standard objects that you think about in a CRM, which is your contacts, your companies, and your tickets. But you can also create, and a lot of people aren't aware of this, you can create your own objects, things that are more meaningful. Hello? Okay. Yeah. And that's it? Thank you very much? No. So, so we can create objects that are more meaningful to us, something that means something to our business. And what you quite often find is people try and shoehorn their business model into a CRM system because it's an existing model. And you think, okay, how can I use this to actually create something that's meaningful to my business? And what you should be thinking is, how can I create a CRM system that is in line with my operational requirements, that is in line with what I'm trying to do from a commercial perspective? And that's where these custom objects come in. So I'm going to talk you through um, a demonstration. And I built Event Tech Live um, as a CRM system. So this is your normal records that you would see. I'll just go full screen, two seconds, there we go. This is a normal CRM records that you would see. So you've got your companies and you've got your contacts. You might have tickets and then you'll have your deals over to the side here. Now, if you can imagine trying to fit something as complex as what you see here today into those records, it's a real challenge. And there are ways around it. There are ways that you can do it, but it becomes more and more complicated to try and align all of these objects together the further down the line you get. So what I've done is I've created a separate set of objects. And you can see just some of these here are attendee meetings. So you've spoken to people today. That's an attendee meeting. That could be a digital footprint that you can store within here. And then we've got attendees. We've got events. We've got exhibitors. We've got sessions. We've got speakers. So these are all of the key components that make up an event. They're all now separate objects. And if you see, if I hover over them, they've got these connecting lines between them. So what we're doing is we're creating these separate objects, but we're allowing these objects to have relationships with one another. And we can then tag these relationships. So an attendee can be related to a session as an audience member or as a question asker or as a speaker. And you can have all of these different relationships associated with different objects. And that's where a CRM really starts to tell your story and starts to be much more individual to the way that you're trying to operate your own business. Let me show you what that looks like in real life as a CRM. So if I go to uh, events here, 
I've got a pipeline of events. So this is ETL. I've got Event Tech Live 2023, which is live. It'll be closed as soon as I'm finished. And then registration open for Vegas. So you can see that we can move these along the pipeline. So straight away, you've got an object which is meaningful. You've also got a timeline, some chronology of what you're actually going to do with that object. So let's now click into Event Tech Live. And straight away, I can see who the attendees are, who the exhibitors are, what attendee meetings have happened, what sessions have happened, and who the speakers are. So you've got all of these separate objects. Now, if I click into uh, an exhibitor package and show myself, for example, this is me. So I can see that um, the growth architect, there was a deal here, and I paid 20 million to be here today. That's, that's yeah, speak to Adam Parry about that. I'll get a discount next year. You can see the event is Event Tech Live, and you can also see that I'm the only person that is here as part of this exhibitor. Obviously, if you had four or five different exhibitors here, they would all be logged here as well. And then you can build different relationships. So you might have somebody who is an administrator as part of an exhibition package, or they might be a VIP attendee that's part of that package as well. So you can label each of these attendees. Now, without creating these separate objects, it's really difficult to do that. But what this model allows you to do is start to build in different, uh, different pieces of objects and put them together. And if we think back to the digital footprints that we were creating, we need to store those in the right place. So if you didn't have a model like this, and you did have attendees talking to one another, where are you going to store that data? Because if you start to store that data on a contact record as some form of text or something that's simple to read, it becomes very difficult to analyze that later. So let's say we've now got to the point where we've got all of these objects. We've now got all of these sessions. I can click into Adam Price. I can see that he's a speaker. Uh, I can see that that's the session that he's a speaker at. I can now click through and I can see all of the attendees that attended this session. And if you were to ask a question today and we had the right configuration, it would add your question to this session in your attendee record so that I could see what questions being asked. And then we could perhaps see, because we've got this here, what the answer was, and that can be tied into there. Then what you've got is a really powerful system to market with last year, next year. So we know which attendees came, we know the questions that they asked. You can tell the person who was actually holding the talk, these, these are the questions that you were asked, this is the information that they really wanted to know. And actually your talk was very similar to five other talks that you weren't able to attend. These are the questions that were asked there. So this is what your audience is really interested in. So you're at the right event. You're paying to exhibit at an event that is right for you because your audience are asking these questions. And actually, we asked them what they're interested in. And 73% of people said they were interested in this. And guess what? You sell this stuff. So you're at the right event. And it fortifies the fact that your marketing can be demonstrated to be shown real evidence that you're asking people to come to the right event. And if you're not asking them, then you need to shape your event to, to cater for these people or they need to find a different event, depending on what that is. So you've now, you now know what your attendees are interested in. You now know where your attendees are going. You've got a log of all of that. And you can start to create some dashboards. Now, I made a couple of these, but I'll be honest, I kind of started building these at about 11 o'clock at night. And I'm a bit of an early bird these days. So there's not many of them. But just to give you an idea of what these dashboards look like, attendees by type. So I can straight away see how many are delegates, how many are exhibitors, how many are staff and how many are VIPs? And it's really easy for me to drill down into this information now. I could filter this by event. I could say, show me the attendees that attended Vegas and not London. Exhibitors by package. So VIP package, gold package, meet the expert package. You can start to see a breakdown of all of the packages that you've got. And then attendee meetings by booking method. So you've got uh, the, beat the meeting was booked to an app or it was a stand scan. So you can start to break down all of these bits of data as well. Now, this is just a couple of examples. But what I really want to try and get you thinking about here is you've got all of these pools of data now that when you try and be really smart about your marketing, when you try and drop intelligent marketing to your attendees or your contacts, you can really think, OK, what's engaging for people? I've got the data. Let me find out what people are interested in. What conversations are they having? Who are they having conversations with? This guy was the busiest guy by far, and he had 37 meetings. And all of his meetings were with these types of people. So we know that he's a real advocate 
we want to be looking at his behavior and we want to see how we can get more people behaving like that and we want to explain to people that you know you can have 37 meetings when you come to a Bentec live really easily if you do what this guy does so you've start you can start to give your exhibitors uh, some free information about what's actually going on at this show and that's when your marketing becomes really personalized and really meaningful and with HubSpot if you are familiar with HubSpot, you can create lists that are active lists based on certain behaviors and certain attributes. So you could quite easily create a list of people that have spoken to a set number of exhibitors and you can call them key engagement, for example. You say you are a key engager because you spoke, you're in the top 10% of people that had meetings and that's just gonna make them feel great because that's what they're here for. And then you're fortifying the fact that they work their ass off to speak to people and actually they're reaping the rewards for that as well. So you, your marketing then becomes very personalized and yes, you have to deploy a strategy and it's cost. It takes time to deploy a strategy. But the beauty is with HubSpot, you build on your strategy, you start to build these lists. You don't have to do the whole thing next year, it's all in place, it's ready to go. So you just keep building and building upon your strategy and you can go from there. So that's, um, that's a little bit about how I, uh, how I use HubSpot to build these data models. Um, and that's how I try and make it specific to the event industry. I do work outside of the events industry. There are all sorts of other models that work. It, you may be an event organizer, you may be looking at it from a completely different perspective. But something that you will definitely have is a very unique model that will work for your business. And you will definitely have very unique digital footprints that you need to record to enable you to put your marketing strategy in a position where it's personalized and people feel valued and they feel that you're listening to them because you've got this data but you need to turn it into footprints and digital footprints so that you can start to market on it so uh, i get the feeling that i've cut this a bit short maybe let me have a look but i just want to talk a little bit actually sorry i've got one more slide So what can I do with the data? I'm gonna give you this example. There's obviously all sorts that you can do with the data, but registration, you can pull the data in from registration systems and you can put that in your system. You can pull all of this session data in and you can put it in your system. We can use it on the website. So for example, as soon as somebody logs for a session, we can send that to your website. So that's a confirmed session. It's now on your website. Um, it, we can update it to event app. So I'm working with uh, an organizer at the moment comes through from registration, goes through to the event app, or we create a session and it goes through to the event app. We do it in one place, which is HubSpot, and that sends it all to the event app. Tracking data, I was watching a really interesting podcast, you may have seen it, it was uh, IMEX talking about how they're using um, facial recognition to understand what people feel like in, uh, when they're listening to these sessions. And uh, we can bring that data in. I mean, how great would it be to say that your session had 20 people frown and 90 people smile? No, that's really good data that you can use. And we can use HubSpot for this. Uh, and then meetings, we discussed that as well, how we can kind of bring that meeting data in. So that's a bit of a kind of, um, if you think about the API of HubSpot, which is super powerful, by the way. If you, if you ever want to get an example of what a really good API looks like, and you've got two hours to buy yourself, go and have a look at the HubSpot API because the information that's available and the way that you can use it is just absolutely incredible. There's probably not many people in the room who will get excited about that, and sorry. Um, but using the HubSpot API, we can populate all of these systems and you can then build yourself a whole ecosystem that's connected. And that's what HubSpot's all about for me. It's about connecting all of these systems together. So, um, yeah, thank you. That's, that's me done. If anyone's got any questions, by all means, fire away. Hello, hello. We do have some questions. I could make them bigger, but I'll just read them out. How does HubSpot update registration systems automatically upon receiving an RSVP within the HubSpot CRM? Yeah, it's a great question. And um, there's no one answer to that because just today you've seen goodness knows how many registration companies that are here. But the real answer to that is um, through the API, through one way or another. There's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, if you've heard of Zapier, you can pay 50 quid a month for Zapier. It's a great way to integrate systems. It can be clunky compared to an API. An API is much easier. If you've got a developer who can build you an API, you can talk to a person that can build it. But of course, if you're on a tight budget or if you want something that's a bit of a quick fix and the registration system that they are using has either got webhook 
um, availability or it's got Zapier integration, then you can kind of build it. And there's a really good feature on Zapier these days. There's an AI uh, kind of configuration system. You literally type in what you want it to do, and it brings up all the modules within Zapier that you need, and it gets you like 90% of the way there. So there's a few ways that you can do it. You can actually do it within workflows um, in HubSpot as well, because you can push things out from there. But the honest answer to that is there are many different ways that you can do it. But nine times out of 10, if you've got the right registration system, then yeah, you, you'll be able to do it. And one final question from Bogdan. CRMs are not a perfect fit for all events. How do you use external products or custom built, built solutions to expand the data collection? Yeah, that's a great question as well. It's not a perfect fit for events, uh, which is why we plug all these other systems into it. Like, there is no perfect CRM system for anything because there's always going to be some nuance that it doesn't do or there's going to be some kind of control that you need over a, a warehouse operation system or something like that that you'll need to integrate into it. So how do we use external products? Sometimes, actually, HubSpot isn't the best fit for my clients, and they need a totally custom system. So I do work with a developer who builds a system called CrossView, and it's much more custom built. So I can help uh, with that side of it by actually bringing someone in to build you a whole system. But nine times out of 10, we can find a system that we can use to integrate it. So it will be a specific registration system that we'll use, or it will be a specific contract system that we'll use to send a contract to a client and then get a signature back. So there's all sorts of different integrations uh, that we can bring into it. But yeah, majority of the time, if it doesn't do the job, there's something that you can connect to it. Uh, that will say like you wouldn't do all of your DIY with a hammer because you'd make a right mess and that's what you can do if you don't bring uh, integrations into systems. Do we have any further questions before we wrap things up? No? Okay, well just leaves me, go on. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks for hanging around. It's been a long day for everyone so appreciate it. Bye.